Hey guys, Matt Johnson here with the latest mini episode of Real Estate Uncensored. As always, I am joined in the co-pilot seat by Greg McDaniel. How's it going, man, today? What is up, Matt? How are you, my friend? It's uh, it always is one of those Mondays. Everyone, we, you know, Matt and I work on work with technology, but I am so technically challenged today. I can't figure out how to minimize one of my windows. Both of the mats on this on this call were able to do it about that fast, and I'm sitting there going, I don't even know what button I was pushing. So I'm just glad to be here. Thanks for. I can't. I'm glad everyone's watching. That's right. We need to get you an assistant that does nothing but follow you around and handles tech things for you. Gives me my helmet to wear so I don't hurt myself when I think, right. you know, That's that kind right. of a thing. They make bicycle helmets now that apparently can fold up and put right into your messenger bag, which I'm guessing you carry, so that'll be fantastic. <laughs> uh, but uh, off topic, we are joined by a special guest, so we're going to talk about how to work with developers and builders, and we have no one better to talk about that than a guy named Matt Clausen, and he's going to talk a little bit about his background, but he comes from the development and building background and is now a licensed agent and works both sides, knows how to work both sides of the deal. So, Matt, how's it going today? It's going great. Thanks for having me today. Yeah, man, no problem. I'm excited for this one. I think we're going to uh, give out some information that people are probably uh, are not hearing from other sources. Uh, I don't see this floating around out there in the ether as far as real estate coaching and training resources out there, you know, how to work with developers, how to work with builders, how to present deals and stuff like that. That's what we're going to talk about today. So before we get started on that, for anybody that's watching the replay, do yourself a favor and uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, not only so you get notified when we put out new videos, but also YouTube will recognize that you like just real estate coaching content in general and they'll start to serve you up videos uh, from other real estate coaches uh, that'll help you build your business even if it's not from us. So you can also go and if you like the audio versions of these types of uh, podcasts for real estate coaching and training, head on over to iTunes and subscribe there to Real Estate Uncensored or you can do the same thing on Stitcher. So, uh, And if you want to follow me or Greg on uh, Twitter, Greg, yours is at McDaniel Systems. Mm -hmm. Mine, for now, is at Broken Funnel. I will probably be changing that shortly. I will keep everyone updated. So with that, Matt, let's get started with you. So first of all, tell us a little bit about, about your development building background and now your transition into also being a, a residential agent. Well, yeah, sure. I, I, uh, boy, I, w I wish I'd become an agent a long time ago. You know, I've been, uh, my, my, my dad started a sort of development uh, construction company about you know, 30 years ago. So he's been building homes and uh, doing, doing pro deals and projects for, uh, gosh, you know, for, for a lot of time. Probably did something like 500 to 600 homes, you know, he's, he's constructed over that time period. So, uh, and I joined up with him, about, you know, about 15 years ago, and uh, it was, you know, so, served as vice president of cost construction. And uh, we're, you know, we're a small team. We had about 20 guys working for us, but, um, you know, really enjoyed it and realized that I loved uh, real estate as well. And I real recently became, a, you know, a realtor too. So, um, had a lot, of, a lot of experience over the years working with realtors. We have, a, you know, have a few that we've worked with predominantly over the course of the past, you know, pro, you know 15 years. And so I definitely had the opportunity to see a lot of realtors come in our office who were either, you know, trying to get our business and become a partner of ours or already, you know, or versus the ones who already were. And so um, that's kind of what I think I'll, you know, talk to a little bit about today. Yeah. So, and that's what I'm curious about because you've seen it from, from the other side and now you know what it's like to be on the inside and have to do all the back end research and, and stuff to present a deal. Mm -hmm. So talk to me about it from like the development side. If you're receiving a deal, if somebody's trying to take something uh, and present it to you as a developer or a builder, what are you looking for? Like what advantage does, uh, you know, having and being in contact with a realtor give to you? What are you looking for from them? Well, the first thing I think that people probably recognize this maybe, but, I, you know, I, I think realtors get a, uh, especially now that I'm a realtor, you know, I feel this way, realtors get a, you know, you know they sort of don't get credit for, for how hard they have to work, you know, and I think no one feels that more than developers and builders, basically, because developers and builders spent years on a project, you know, once they, once they do a project, they spend, you know, they spend years working on this thing, and they're hoping to make 15% or whatever their, you know, their margin's going to be on the, pro on the deal, and they see realtors come in on the deal, and they pull their 6% profit right off the top and then at the back end as well. And I think there's always a little bit of, as, as, a, uh, as a developer and as a builder, you work you know, very hard, just like realtors do. But you don't, you, know, you don't see all the effort that the realtors are putting into all the deals that don't happen. You don't see all the, all the effort the realtors are doing you know, that behind the scenes. All you're seeing is their input on this one deal that they've got 6%, you know, the realtors took 6% on this deal, and you, you're going to spend years working on this thing, and you may lose money on the deal, right? Mm -hmm. So right off this top, I think developers have an inherent feeling that realtors um, are getting a, 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 a pretty good deal, right? They don't maybe have as much respect for the work that realtors put in as, uh, as, you know, as they probably should. 
so I think a, a realtor needs to understand when they come in to a, to a developer or a builder's office, they have to understand that this is already kind of uh, probably a, a feeling that, the, that, that, that this developer has, and they have to prove their worth every step of the way. They have to bring something to that office. You know, the, the developer and the, and the, or the builder is working re, you know, real hard on all their projects they have going on. They're working, they're just keeping their operation going. It's amazing how much, you know, how much effort that takes. They have a very small window of you know, time to, to spend thinking about what they're going to do with the next, the next step. Even though that's so important to their business, that's probably the thing they, they spend, in my experience anyway, they don't spend enough time thinking about that. And that's really what the realtors bring to the table are the opportunities for the future, right? So... I think the most important thing that you do is you, you got to come in right away and show your worth. And your worth is that you want to be, you basically want to benefit this team. You want to come into this team and you want to bring something to the table. You need to bring something that they that they don't already know. And it can't be something that, it can't be a piece of land that's been on Zillow for you know that they, you know for a year and you're just bringing it in trying to kick a tire see if they want it. You know you need to show that you've done some research on what these what this team does. And then you need to bring something that's either you know brand new. You know, either before it's, before it's listed, you need to bring something that they couldn't have just seen themselves, right? Or it's got to be something that all of a sudden is in play. Like maybe you know there's two developers, two builders bidding on some project, and you want to make them aware of it. You know, so you're basically keeping them up to date with something they wouldn't know in their little office, or you're bringing something that isn't even on the market yet. So you've got to bring something to them that they, they can't just see really readily on their own. So, Matt, i got a quick question for you. Um, since you have come through the AIM program here at Rockcliffe, um, one of the things that I kind of preach to, and I want to see if it holds any water, otherwise I've been telling people a lie, <laughs> but, um, you know, it's uh, to bring something unique to the to the to the to developers table what I say, say is go down to the county or the city's planning departments get a hold of the different projects that may be started but now have may not have been completed so they might be at a, at a tentative map or maybe even a final map but not ready to go to to build yet or something along those lines and take those projects back out to developers because um, the city wants to dump dump the project and get their tax revenue the developer wants the product to sell, and of course, we're the real estate agents. We want to sell sell the product. So, is that where would you suggest people to start there, and then just start asking questions of the landowners? Because if they have this piece of land, they may have other projects that aren't are, aren't on the market legitimately. You know, what's your take on that? Well, I, I think it's a great idea. I think it's thinking outside the box. It's showing, per, you know, it's, it's <laughs> that's, that's what you're good at, right? <laughs> thinking outside the yeah, box. Imagine that. <laughs> doing positive effort. You know, that, that's what they want to see. So you need to, I mean, I, I think it's a fantastic idea. You know, I, I didn't see a lot of that, honestly. You know, it wasn't, uh, in my experience, so just based on the fact that it is, when I was, you, you know, spending even more time in my office at the construction office, um, I, I didn't see a lot of realtors coming in with that. It was typically with, you know, not stalled projects so much as things that were, uh, mar you know, deals that were on the market, right? And so I think that's, you're basically creating business in the in what, in what you just uh Sort of right. uh, your example. So what um, you 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 did go like what to LoopNet or something like that and get get some land that's been sitting in on the on the market for God knows how many years. It's a dead or stalled project and they're like hey check this new piece of hundred acres out. You're like yeah it's, it's has toxic you know waste on it and it's an Indian burial ground and it's <laughs> well, going to slide have, into I, the ocean and hey it's a great deal though you know. So the realtors that we were even we worked with predominantly would come in with those kind of deals sometimes you know and, and it was it was sort of a waste you'd say you know. Why you, know, you really should come look at this? You know, it's it's a it's a great piece of property, da da da. And maybe I'm already aware of it. You know, I know I looked at I looked at that two years ago, uh -huh. and there's a fault line running right through it, and it's impossible to develop, and that's why it's been sitting there for years. And they're really just kicking tires. You know, they don't have anything to do, and they're just trying to maintain the relationship, which is, you know, it's fine, but it's not really bringing a benefit to us, right? Whereas and if a new agent comes in and tries to tries to get you know bring something you're not even to listen to them right someone you don't have a relationship with and they say hey I just thought this might be interesting to you right away you kind of know they're not someone you want to work with yeah. so if you're a new agent coming into an office you do have to have something like you just you, you, like you just mentioned something new right you need whether mm -hmm. you created it you know by by doing some research or it's just something you're aware of um, you got to somehow bring something to the table right away to let them know that you are, you know, you're, you're this is you're, you're coming in here with something of value to them. So because basically, then, you, could, you could either you could also maybe get my I want your opinion on this. You could either how do I say either? It's it's you can also do this. Uh, maybe if it's a, a certain type of zoning, 
but you know you can go higher dense you know density you know residential or do a mixed use you know development in there or something to add value right so I mean would that be something of interest so let's say we were talking about uh, medium density um, townhouses or something and then you're like hey sure. well if you guys were to donate you know these four acres of this other par parcel for a park the city will then allow you to do a mixed use product and add two more stories or something you know Greg, you sound like a developer <laughs> Maybe, well, you know, it's it, that, that's exactly that, that. That'd be you're basically doing the thinking for them. So that's a fantastic idea too. You know, that's and again, that's that's that that is something that developers w would love to see. You know, and, I, and I, I wish we saw more of that. <laughs> you know, you know, that's dangerous. If if I'm thinking outside of the box, I mean, that's like three blind mice. It's like a, a real estate agent leading a developer. It's like that sounds like it could be a scary situation there. <laughs> But it's as with anything, uh, you know, uh, the key to a lot of success in life is taking the mental burden off of mm -hmm. other people, and that's that's exactly what that is. Yeah, creativity. You know, it just if you were able, like Matt, you were saying, well, since I have two Matts here, I have to go by last names, Clausen. Um, you know, it, it, so it, it's literally something as simple as going out. Talking to the different cities, getting the different projects, making contact with the landowners, figuring out what what they're willing to do, if they're willing to part with it, or part of it, or partner with it, or something like that, and or if they have other projects, then put a little package together, maybe a couple of pieces of paper, you know, pull some re you know geological reports that you can get online, or pay a couple of bucks and get some stuff done, and then deliver a package with what it's zoned for to the potential developers, and then wash, rinse, and repeat. Is that what I'm hearing? Well, that I wish you were hearing it because that wasn't my it's your idea, but that's that, yeah, that's exactly the kind of thing they want to see because you created value. You basically, as, as Matt just said, the other Matt, uh, you, know, <laughs> you know, you basically created value. You thought of the idea, you spent the effort to basically put something right in front of them that they can either consider yes or no, and they mm -hmm. and they and they're gonna they're gonna love that because a lot of developers and builders don't. I mean, de probably developers have a little you know spend a little more time on it, but a lot of times they get so caught up in their current projects they don't spend as much time. As they should on exactly what you're talking about, trying to work, figure out the next deal, trying to make the next deal happen, and that's what you just did. So uh, you know that that's that's exactly the kind of thing you have to do. What if you're able to get in touch with multiple different developers, create a pipeline and potential joint ventureships with 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 each other, or or find like a hard money lender or someone that will you know lend the cash to you know build the project out you know faster versus waiting to wait waiting to have that last project. Get completed, take the capital from that, and roll into the new one. So, I mean, there's got to be firms out there that do do that, right? I mean, bridge loans, construction loans, all that stuff. I know they do that stuff, but I'm not talking about and partnerships. And that's easier. I mean, it's it's easier to find the money if you can uh -huh. find the project. Now, you know, obviously, a few years back was a little harder to get to get the money. You know, as far as lenders and that kind of thing. Right uh -huh. now, it doesn't seem if you've got you know if you've got a good project, you usually typically it's not as hard. About it. It's pretty. It's not that hard right now to get the money. Uh -huh. But that said, the more the more eggs you put in the basket for them, the better your 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 what you're presenting is going to look. So it and the easier you make it on them, the better. Now that said, it's still really imperative that you. I mean, you, you've got to. And this is something we didn't talk too much about. When you go into those, when you do have this relationship, when, either whether you're developing a relationship or you already have one. You really need to try. It, it, it's worthwhile to spend time talking about what they want, right? right? Because, because you know, you know, if you go in with this this project that we you know that, that we've talked about, say it's a you know it's a big lot that can be divided into you know four parcels or whatever that that'd be a small development, but mm -hmm. it's something like that, and you. You you bring it to a builder who's not you know it's just not up their alley. It, they're, you're, they're already going to write you off, right? You don't you haven't thought about yeah. you're you're just kind of going. Obviously, you're going from door to door, throwing your packet to put you know. So that's not going to work. Your idea is great as long as you've taken the time to know that you're dealing with you're presenting it to builders of who that's you know this is in the region they work. This is the type of project they're looking for, and especially yeah. you've somehow already had that discussion with them where they know they you're out there looking for them, and you come with the project. Then they've now you've really kind of created. A bond with them because they, they you you've taken the time to listen to them what they what they what they're looking for you went out and found it put some effort into to, to put to presenting it now you maybe are creating a relationship that's going to result not just in that deal but but deals down the road so I think um, I think it's also really important to to show them that you're listening to them and to and to take the time to to have a conversation about what it is that they want not of course what it is that you know. Well, what you're looking for, it's what they're looking for. You know? Right, and that's the, that's really funny because I was working with a, a developer uh, and flipper, and 
I brought him when I first started working with him. I didn't I, I didn't know what he liked and didn't like. Um, and I brought him a, a, an apartment or a t townhouse or something, an attached walls uh, unit, you know, PUD. And he he will he won't touch that with a ten foot pole. He'll only do single family. But then there's other guys I know that would just fall over themselves for these different projects. And you know, I just I just why have I not? I've been teaching this stuff for two years. Guess how much of it I've actually done? Eh, zero. So I'm gonna go out there and I'm you better not beat me down to the down to the playing department, pal. Because uh, <laughs> I know where it is. I know the address for sure. Hey, you yeah, have to solve uh, the <laughs> No, but I'm gonna go and I'm gonna make 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 contact with these folks and you know and start this. You know, it, it makes no sense not to. It's just another vein in your in your business, guys. And so everyone watching this, you know, if you guys don't know, you know, Matt Clausen, you know, give him a call. He's one hell of a nice guy. I was honored to, you know, to have him in, in through our course and being able to start to call him a friend and, you know, see him around the office more. He's a wealth of knowledge. So hit him up, you know, put a deal together with him. You know, it, it, it it's worthwhile. Reach out to other developers. You know, if you think, it's like, uh, it's like anything else, past clients. You think that they don't want to talk to you? No, they do want to talk to you. But like Matt said, you got to bring value. Like everything else in life, you have to bring value. Yeah, and Matt, speaking of that, so what's the, uh, obviously you have a couple ways that people can work with you or refer you business. You've got the development side with your dad's company still going on, uh, and then of course you've got the residential side. So what's the best way for people to uh, to make contact with you? Well, you know, you www.mattclawson.com is probably the best way to get a hold of me. My phone number, all my contact information is there, so I would love to talk to anybody and help you any way I can. Um, you two, I've watched your podcast. You guys do a great job. This is a great service that you guys are doing. That's why I'm on today because um, I just know it's real valuable to people, and you guys are doing a great job. So hopefully, more more and more people keep listening. And uh, cool. I uh, and Greg, I, I was lucky enough to, to take that class with Greg, and he just has such a passion for it, and it's uh, contagious. So <laughs> in a good way, not like a skin eating virus or anything, right? <laughs> this is a good <laughs> well, it's a little bit contagious in a negative way. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm All right, getting guys. beat up by the mats. That's right. Yo, yeah, getting getting uh, ganged up on by the mats. But yeah, uh, Clawson, seriously, thank you. This was uh, this is really good. I think we gave people a really great place to start, and uh, it's I think it's a mindset shift. If anything, is to to take as much mental burden off the developer, off the builder as possible, bring as much value as possible. And that, as long as you're making that effort, even if the deal isn't right for them, it it, it would seem to me like they're going to respect the effort. They're going to respect your attempt to take as much of the mental burden off them as possible, and at least they'll be open to a conversation and share what they are looking for for next time, right? That's right. As long, you just got to show them early on that you're on their team, you know, and that you're you're working for them, and uh, and and they and then they'll respect you. You know, if you listen to them and you and you show and they, and they believe that you're that you're that you're out there searching for them, you know, you know that that's what they want to see. They don't want to think that they're your your fifth guy and that you're just throwing them all you know all projects that everyone else has already turned down. So yeah. Everybody likes to buy. Nobody wants to be sold. That's right. Yep. Yeah. Very true. Well, cool. Well, thank you so much, guys. Clawson, again, thank you so much. Uh, www.mattclawson.com. So that's C-L-A-W-S-O-N for anybody that does not know. So that's the best way to reach out to him. Uh, as always, subscribe to the podcast either on YouTube, iTunes, or Stitcher. So with that, guys, I think we'll sign off. And we've got another uh, one coming in a couple of days with me and Greg where we're talking about the, uh, the daily habits that are killing your real estate career. So that'll be a fun little mini episode for everyone. <laughs> Probably we'll a little set, We'll set Greg too. loose a little bit. <laughs> That's dangerous, and I love or it. Or maybe yelling. I'm going to have to turn Greg's mic down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, As you guys can tell, we have a lot of fun doing this. Matt, you're a rock star. Matt, you're a rock star. You guys are all watching this. Thank you so much. We appreciate you, every one of you. All right. Later, guys. Peace.